Hello, I'm Ellen and I'm here at the beautiful Purple Valley Yoga Retreat Center and we're having this beautiful rain today and uh, we're gonna go through the seated postures of the primary series up until uh, Navasana. So, let's start. So, the first pose we have is uh, Dandasana. So in Dandasana, you want to have you want to set up for the coming posture. So you want to depress the shoulders, meaning pushing the shoulders down. And you want to lift up the front of the body. So you have these two forces going on. You have the lift up through the front of the body, navel lifting up and the bandhas. And you have the downward force on the back of the body. So underneath your armpits, the back is pushing down. Now you try and keep that when you go forward and grab your toe, you try to keep the same relationship. So you're still lifting up through the front of the body and you're pushing your shoulders down. Even when you're leaning forward, you pull your elbows towards you. So the sides of the body pushing down, front of the body lifting up. Now we come to the Adha Bada. Padmatanasana. So here you want to take your foot in gently to a half lotus and you want to bind. Now sometimes we try to bind this way and the arms feel too short. So here you really need to lengthen and use some force and ta-da there was your toe. Now more advanced people you can hold the toe and you can even flex the foot so it takes you into a deeper forward bend. So after this we have a, an outward rotation, sorry, an inward rotation of the foot, Triang Mukai Kapada. Here you really want to have your thighs inward rotating. If you fall to the side, you could just keep your hands on the floor, lift up from your sit bones. And if you can, take the hands off. If this means you fall to the side, you could simply keep one hand on the floor. So you want to ground from your hands to your armpits, to your sit bones. Now, after the outward rotation and the inward rotation, we have a series of three outward rotations, the Janu Shisasana A, B and C. So here you have to check what's the situation with your, with your knees, how open are your hips. If your hips, if your knees come all the way down, it's okay. If your knee is up, it might be a good idea to put a block under your knee. Otherwise, you tend to tilt to get the knee down. It takes you into a side bend rather than a forward bend. Yeah? So you can put the block to keep your hips straight. And again, pulling the elbows back. Lifting up the front of the body, you can go forward. Now the next stage just keeps deepening the outward rotation. Sole of the foot is pointing up if you can. And you try to keep the toes forward. See here is the thigh is outward rotating. The minute I let go of my toes, I'm going into an inward rotation. So you want to open your hips here. So you want to keep the toes facing forward as best as you can. Now the third one is just a further rotation of the thigh. It's actually very close to a Padmasana. So you want to, you, for advanced students, you might want to squeeze your knees together a bit, flex the, flex the foot deeper, so you can come deeper into a forward rotation of the pelvis. Then we have a series of four, the Marichyasana, A, B, C and D. Starting very simply, standing on one foot, your sit bone comes off the floor. You go around and here you really want to squeeze your knee in. So I hope you can see how this relates to your Supta, your Kurmasana, yeah? You want to get those knees into the armpits so you can get into your Kurmasana later. So this builds up to that. 
Then you have B. Again, you take your foot carefully in. And here sometimes you see the knee coming up, but you really want to stand on your knees. You're on one knee, one foot. It's not here and it's not here. So you might again want to elevate your knee so you can stand on your knee and then you can go forward. For C, again you can stand on your foot, you can cross the midline to get around and you can lift up through your lower back. Again, D, you take your knee in, and here you want to point your knee slightly forward rather than out to the side, so it's a closer pose, and you have more space to come around and to bind. Last pose is Navasana. Now in Navasana, you want to use your arms. So you want to depress your shoulders. You want to push them down and pull them into the sockets. That's going to make it easier for you to stay here. If you let go your arms, it's going to be harder to lift the chest. So take the shoulders down, pull the arms into the sockets and then lift the legs. You might want to start here. That's okay. And then you can work up to lifting the feet up to a V pose. Okay, so that was a half primary. <laughs> <laughs>